Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, where we have a brick and mortar store in Tucson, Arizona. And some of my favorite things and some of your favorite things to do is go through the old time machine here and look at stuff in old mint packaging. So uh, old original packaging here from uh, Washington, Treasury Department, April of uh, 1953. Insured, stamped, signed, sealed, and delivered. Let's see what's this one is actually noticed since they wrote down 1952 P on here and it's shipped in April of 53. And that's actually something that I've noticed on almost all of the things in here. Um, here we go. Some of those early mint sets and just how cool they looked. And you'll notice that uh, this says 52 P on it. And so it has two of each coin. And this is something that, uh, you know, it's only a partial set. Uh, I'm wondering if in this situation, the family had, you know, given all of, uh, you know, the coins split up three different ways. But uh, super lustrous set of coins. Some of that original, original cardboard toning that you're going to see when you get into mint sets. Now, this set is actually really nice and bright. And by that, I mean sometimes these coins are kind of dull, and uh, they're toned and dull. Uh, these coins, I have not flipped over to look at the other side of them. Um, yeah, uh, Lots of times, the side that's been actually in touch with the paper is not as brilliant or as nicely toned uh, as others. Uh, you know, this side usually with that oxidization has a little bit nicer look to it. The tricky thing on these is oftentimes the nickel and penny where you'll run into really kind of rough toning on them or environmental damage where you start getting spots and heavier stuff on them. But the silver coins oftentimes are really, really pretty epic as far as their overall appearance goes in toning. So that is uh, 52P, but we've got, we've got a whole lot more of these to look at real quick. And uh, let me grab whatever's next here. So this one says 1953 on the corner and has the original tags on there. Merchandise, fourth class, insured. And it's got uncirculated, 1P1S. Okay, so this says that it's got uh, two boards in it. And let's see here, it does have, looks like it does have two boards. Let's see, you're not the only one bored, and we're going to look at these guys here. And one of the things that you notice, again, is that was shipped in 54 and it's dated 53. And let's get a close look here at the different coins. Now this guy, this is the Philadelphia Mint. They wrote P on the corner. P for Philadelphia. Once again, you've got really bright nickels. I'm, I'm always excited about that. One of the more challenging areas to collect is those uh, nickels from the 40s and 50s and just trying to find something that has good eye appeal, good luster. Modern nickels even harder probably, but those nickels from the 40s and 50s, to get good eye appeal on them is not the easiest thing in the world. And uh, so you see that very t prototypical um, toning once again on these guys. Now let's see if the San Francisco Mints, this has an S on it, uh, if it has any different look to them. The San Francisco coins oftentimes are even more lustrous than uh, the other coins, especially that like 1952, 3, 4 era. You just saw an insanely lustrous coins from the San Francisco Mint in those years. I don't know why, but they didn't have as strong of a strike, but they had just bombastic luster to them. Yep, Mr. Bombastic, really fantastic. Really pretty set there. So this one had the two boards in it. It said it had two boards in it. We'll see, I gotta keep these together so I don't lose track of too many things here. Now here's something I don't see very often. This one says it's 49. See, and you can see they crossed out the D, like they got rid of the D and it says P and S, registered, uncirculated. Um, dated in the spring of 50. So you guys, 
you know, you think about how we complain about the timing of things, but it looks like the timing was different. Now I'm only seeing one board in here, but I can't think of the last time I had a set this early. I wonder if we've got another board somewhere. Um, so I've, I haven't really had a 1949 set. That's one of the earliest issues. These issues, they started them in 47 this way. Before that, you had to buy kind of individual coins. And so there's that quarter. That quarter's got like all the... It's a little dark straight on, but it has that kind of oil slick going on the other other uh, at the other angles. And uh, just really nice. I'm really impressed actually with these sets overall with the uh, how bright how bright those nickels are. Um, curious to see if we got some some full. Yeah, we got some pretty full strikes there. On that guy, I got to see if we've got that 53s. Uh, half dollar now that we're I'm thinking about it they've got I got myself thinking here 53 do we have a 53 s ah, see here's what I wasn't gonna do I wasn't gonna flip any of the coins over but uh, you can just see how there's there's just not that full bell line at the bottom, it's just not not, not there. All right, try not to get the packages too mixed up here. This one's dated, uh, interesting enough, says 55, but the date says 58 on it. So I wonder if you got these ones mixed up. No, nope. look, so 55 and 56, right? So this one says 55 on it. No, that doesn't say, let's see, that says 56, not 58. There we go. Philadelphia Mints. Oh, I like that. It's kind of cool tone to it on the half dollar there. These become more and more available once you get into the 50s. But once again, finding entire sets is hard. Most sets are probably put back together again, and I don't mean by the cardboard and putting new coins in, although that happens also. But, um, you know, like in this case, where these sets should have more than one mint mark with them, and they just have the one mint with them. Oh boy, I'm try not to break everything here. Um, those sets oftentimes have been taken apart, and so someone has to put them together again. So here we go, we've got a... Uh, Another one you can let me see where this has the date. This date is looks like 55, and they're saying it's a 54 set, so that would hold true for the rest of them so far. This one's a Philadelphia, this 54 set. And once again, overall, pretty nice looking coins. I have not flipped these coins over. Or taking them out of the holder. Uh, in fact, most of these, it's the first time I've looked at them. I'm liking what I'm seeing there on the nickels once again, that actually you got a little bit of tone to that. Just a little bit of tone on your nickels. A little bit of spotting too, unfortunately. 55 and 54. Once again, I'm trying to not get my packages mixed up. It's the type of thing that I do. I unpackage things, and then I'm just like a kid at Christmas. Things end up everywhere. Uh, so this one's just labeled a 58 Unc P. It doesn't have the outer package. Same thing with this 57 Unc P. No outer package. Ooh, we get a pink one. Here we go. This is exciting. I've never done a study on which ones have the pink paper and which ones have the green paper. So, but this 57, now, well, this one's all the way out. You can see that there was glue or adhesive used on the back of these. And actually, also, this was the glued side. Look at, look at all that. This was the not glued side. So, um, yeah, that's a pleasing, there's some pleasing colors on this guy. For sure, for sure. And a lot of guys collect these just for the combination of condition and toning. 
Make, you know that that's a pretty coin that half dollar up there very very purple looking dimes heavy heavy on the heavy on the magenta so this one we get to see the uh, glued downside and uh, just how affected they were and uh, not bad actually this is really nice looking on these pennies the color overall is really nice at different angles uh, the half dollar nothing too wild all right, well, that I find to be pretty attractive, this uh, quarter. You know, one of the things that I'm noticing on all these sets, though, is that conditionally they're really nice, and that sounds silly maybe coming from mint sets, but a lot of these coins that were in mint sets, people popped them out and took them out and handled them and put them back in, and so you'll see lots of, like, little little things going on, but all in all, I'm finding these to be pretty pleasing uh, to be kind of a nice-looking nice group. Okay, I'm going to... Get that back with the packaging over here. Get it out of the way where I'll forget about it for three months and lose it. The 58 set. Also with an interesting green. This is a much darker green compared to like this faded green that you see on the earlier sets. Philadelphia. I did not put those uh, sirens in there. All right. Let's see here. There's... In, in, one of the things that to pay attention to probably on this is just how many different coins we're looking at here and how, you know, a lot of them have really nice toning, but but not not a lot of them have just like stun, a stunning look or a different look. A lot of them have a very similar look. So lots of times when guys buy coins with toning, they're looking for something particular, sometimes to their eye or sometimes to what has become perceived as the market's eye. But like this, uh, this dime stands out here as something that's a little bit more unusual. And then I've got a couple more here that are not in holders. What do we got here? Maybe this is going to go with those other ones. What years What years are here? Oh, 49S. There we go. Got to go find that 49 group that I had a second ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this look. This is the look. So lots of the commemoratives from the 40s and 50s, they were shipped in cardboard containers. And that's that's kind of the look that I like. This is going to be the look that's on this uh, Franklin half dollar here. And uh, a lot of coins that you'd see getting the CAC sticker had that kind of same eye appeal to them, same look. Yeah, those are cool. That's that's kind of up my alley on those guys. These are tempting me to um, send them in and get them certified. Um, my intent on these as I'm going through them here for the first time is to just probably probably eBay auction them. I got a Philly Mint here too. Let's see what year this is on this guy. Let's see, that's the it's a 51. 51 Philly. Once again, all really nice looking coins. Now, before I get to the end, I actually have some really cool stuff to show you that's a little bit different with some packaging. So this says it's a 51, uh, 50 printed, uh, shipped in 52. And so, ah, they're loose. 51P. Okay, I'm a little concerned about what I'm hearing in there, so we're just gonna go ahead and, I. Dang nabbit. Does anyone have a coin holder here? Somebody? Somebody? Bueller? So this is how 50, how the proof sets were actually shipped. This is a 52 proof set, uh, pardon me, a 51 proof set. You notice that we were consistent all the way through this entire group of things that things shipped in the spring of the following year that it was issued. But these were issued in these cellophane packages and i be careful nothing else jumps out at me here. But there should be a little staple up here. There it is. They were all put together and stapled together. And you can see the cellophane is really thin and crackly and things would pop out. This group, maybe I'll send these guys in. I uh, hope those loose coins didn't get too beat up. But uh, one of the things I'm liking, what I'm seeing here, is there's a touch of a cameo here on the dime. So the cameo appearance is that black and white finish, that um, 
offset that you'll see. It's really hard to get on the nickel and penny especially to get a cameo look is very difficult. Only the earliest, earliest coins had a cameo look to them, the earliest coins struck. But uh, this nickel here, let me get him into a little bit of a holder. I think a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of dust came out with that. Um, not a cameo, but he's got a, a touch of cameo. He's not, he's not strictly glossy. You know, some of these guys at all angles is nothing but a glossy finish. Let's go ahead and get this guy into a holder. And uh, what a pretty looking coin that is. Nice. A little bit of a cameo look to it. Maybe not a complete cameo. But very, very cool nonetheless. And then last but not least, something else that I found really, really interesting. Uh, this 1948 PDS. And so it is um, Horace M. Grant from Rhode Island. And so this was fun. We've got his original paperwork in here. Coins, glass, Indian relics, and stamps. Sounds sounds awfully familiar to me. His uh, Rhode Island ANA number. And what he was selling here. 32322 Unk Red. Um, we've got your cents, PDS, nickels, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. 15 cents, 30 cents, 55 cents, $1.20, $1.50, 365 total plus tax. 365 total for this 1948 set. Um, interesting enough because a 1948. PDS set was issued for four dollars and ninety-two cents, so um, this was a buck below, and so it looks like he was making his own mint sets and selling stuff because I, I don't think he could have bought them from the U.S. Mint and put them in these holders and then sold them because it looks like he was selling them for less than the U.S. Mint was selling stuff for. So here's your 48. There's the D mint on that guy. So you got your 48 P and D on the nickel. Yeah. 48 P and D on the nickel. Here's the quarters, PDNS 1948. So interesting, he's got them packaged the same way you saw with the, how the proof sets were sold. Cellophane and a staple. Then that, that, you know, there's some rust from where that staple was hitting right there. Rusted, started to rust through the holder a little bit. Um, well, no, it looks like the plastic could be intact there. Maybe there's a hole. Hard to tell. But you do have all three coins. On here, really nice high grade mint state looks like. Of course, unless you can get a 67, all is lost. Same with some of these earlier 48 coins. Really hard to collect these guys in super high grade because um, they come really, really nice. And so, to get the ultimate grades, you just have to keep one out thing. It's not like it's not like with with uh, Morgan dollars where it's like, well, 65 is a good grade, 66, wow, you're up there, 67 is to the moon, and then 68s and 9s are almost, you know, unheard of. You know, when you get into some of these other mid-century modern coins, you know, it's a different, it's a different, well, not grade scale, but just like it's different trying to find certain grades on certain coins. Three cents, PDS, also all original there. In the cellophane, let's take one last look at these half dollars and then uh, call it a day. 1948 half dollar P&D. Really nice looking coins. Of course, it looks like, I don't know if he was getting original bank wrap rolls. Got a little hit there above the 48. But uh, once again, I don't think he was breaking up 
uh, mint sets and sell them at a loss. But uh, very cool, both coins here, very nice coins. Strong strike, this guy's got full bell lines on him on this 48, 48 Philly. And the 48 Denver. Um, do looks like it. I gotta get a different angle, different light maybe even for that, a little bit fainter, there you go. Looking like full, full bell lines on those guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, 48 PD, I think we're missing a coin there, aren't we? 48, 48S. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.